Assalamu alaikum. My name is Rajesh and I am from IT profession. My question is, why a religion for a peace? Why a religion? Yeah, why do we need a religion? Brother asked a very good question. That why do you need a religion? Like Islam or any other religion. Brother, if you understand what is the meaning of religion? Religion, according to Oxford Dictionary, means a belief in a superhuman controlling power, a personal god or gods that deserve worship. If only there were a way we could have figured that out without you having to explain it to us. In Islam, the Arabic word used is deen. Deen in Islam means a way of life. You just finished laying out what the word religion meant, and then you changed it to meaning way of life. He clearly isn't asking you why you need a way of life. He's asking you why you need to believe in a superhuman controlling power, such as a personal god or gods. So you asked me the question that why do you require a way of life? No, he asked you why do you need a religion? And now you've turned it around so you're answering a much different sort of question. And why do you require to understand as Oxford Dictionary says, religion means believing in God. So why do we have to understand God? The reason is that, brother, normally when you get a machine, if you get a machine, maybe a complicated machine, along with it you get an instruction manual. I'm asking the question, why do you require the instruction manual? Here I thought you were supposed to be the one answering questions. Turns out you want to ask the anonymous badass questions instead. You need the instruction manual so that you can put the machine together properly. That's the answer. Why? Why are you clapping? He hasn't made a single coherent point. Well, besides the original definition of the word religion, which he then went on to ignore anyway. Why, brother? To understand. To understand, because you don't know the machine. If you allow me to call the human being the machine, You'll have to agree it is the most complicated machine on the face of the earth. So don't you think this requires an instruction manual? Well, first off, I don't agree to let you call a human being a machine. I'm not a blender or a motor. These machines that come with instruction manuals are made by human beings. I realize that you think your god is the creator, much like the human being who designed and created the hypothetical blender. But that isn't the case. If it is, then you have a lot of work ahead of you to show that your specific god does exist. Why is it more plausible than the Christian version of God or the Hindu versions? Also, the designer of the blender doesn't provide the blender with an instruction manual. Why? Because the blender isn't conscious, which is another huge difference between human beings and machines. Now, maybe at some point we will create a machine capable of consciousness, but as far as we know that hasn't been achieved yet. Third, if the blender were conscious and able to comprehend the instruction manual given to it, why should it automatically believe that the instruction manual is right? Especially when that instruction manual convinces some of the blenders to short circuit in a crowd of innocent blenders. Or when the instruction manual tells the blender that a more primitive form of blender flew to the moon and split it in two. I mean, if I were that blender, I'd have some serious questions about the instruction manual as a whole. Especially when the instructions directly oppose what we can observe to be true about the world around us. Or the kitchen around us. Hey. If I'm going to live out my life as a blender, I had better be a Vitamix, because that thing can blend raw veggies into a soup and heat it up. Oh, and it makes a delicious protein shake. The last and final instruction manual for the human being, it is the glorious Quran. And why not the Bible or the Vedas? Like how you have the instruction manual written by the producer of that equipment, or the manufacturer, or the inventor. Our manufacturer, our producer, our creator is Almighty God. So he knows what is best for the human being. He didn't seem to know that the ancient literature isn't the best way to convey an important message because Muslims can't even unanimously decide what the book means. Some are Islamists who believe that Sharia law must be implemented and that they're doing homosexuals a favor by throwing them off roofs. Others are more moderate and want to live their lives peacefully while following the traditions of Muhammad. Like Christianity, Islam can mean different things to different people, and everyone thinks their version or interpretation is correct. I've never read an instruction manual that was written by an almighty being, but I would think that if I had, it would be a lot clearer, a lot more precise, and written in such a way that everyone came away with an understanding of what the book meant. Hell, I don't even know why such a being would resort to a book at all. Why not just beam the knowledge into each person's head in a manner that each one would implicitly understand what this being wanted? 
So based on this, Almighty God has given the rules and regulations. For example, when you buy a DVD player, it tells you if you want to play the DVD, insert the DVD, press the play button. If you want to fast forward, press the FF button. If you want to skip, press the skip button. If you want to stop, press the stop button. Don't drop it from a height, it will get damaged. Don't immerse it in water, it will get spoiled. There's an instruction manual. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last and final instruction manual, the glorious Quran, has written the do's and don'ts for the human being. All right, so what does the Quran say about the ethics of stem cell research, internet etiquette, or the possible creation of artificial intelligence? I mean, it seems that Indonesian authorities thought that their book demanded a woman be caned 23 times in front of a jeering crowd for standing too close to her boyfriend. In Saudi Arabia, authorities finally allowed women to drive, but the ban was previously upheld by clerics who said that men wouldn't know how to handle seeing a woman in a car next to them, or that driving might hurt a woman's ovaries. On the other hand, there are Muslims who would never cane a woman for standing too close to her boyfriend, or who would never wish to prevent a woman from driving a car. Call me crazy, but it seems like your instruction manual is faulty. If I were the CEO of a blender company that sent out an instruction manual that led to millions of different blenders being put together, many of which didn't work properly, I'd expect to be fired immediately. And Almighty God has only sent one religion. Allah says clearly in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19, in Nadina in the Lail Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Almighty God is Islam. Here's a good example of why monotheistic religions are doomed to clash. If you believe that your religion is the only acceptable religion, and you run up against another religion that believes the same thing, you're going to have friction. Anyway, he never really answers the question. The answer is, you don't need religion. We are perfectly capable of creating philosophies, moral frameworks, and institutions that don't rely on the supernatural. That doesn't mean it will be easy. It certainly won't seem as easy as cracking open some ancient book and pretending the creator of the universe sent you this holy instruction manual. But it can be done. We can choose to think for ourselves. I really believe that's the path forward we should be embracing. That's all I have for you today. Sorry if my voice still sounds gravelly. <laughs> I'm still recovering from my cold, but I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Take care and cheers.